2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Ephesians 1 and 3 reads, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. You may be seated. There is a new saying, a new idiom that is spreading throughout pop culture. It's everywhere. You can find it on the radio, VH1. <laughs> Every person from Cardi B to Sports Nation says it now. And the phrase is, how to get to the bag, or getting to the bag. And you gotta understand what this phrase means. I asked my wife, did she know what the phrase means, to get to the bag? And she said no, she had never heard it before. And then two seconds later, we heard it on TV. <laughs> to get to the bag. It means to get to the money, to get to the cash, to get to the paper, to get to the dollars, to get to the coin, to get to the check, the green, the pesos, the moolah, the cheddar, to get to the bag. And they say you got to do whatever you got to do to get to get to to the bag. Whatever you chasing, whatever you doing, if it ain't getting you closer to the bag, it don't matter. <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do in order to get to the bag. And I was thinking, why don't people chase after Jesus like that? Why don't people chase after God like they chase after the bag? They'll do anything. They'll work long hours. They'll do whatever they got to do to get to to get to the bag. And I've seen that it's because they don't believe it's any benefit or blessings in going after Christ. Because if they would have thought it was some benefits and blessings to going after Christ, I guarantee you, guess what? <laughs> they would have went after him. They would seek him. They would chase him. They would thirst. They would hunger for him if they thought it was any blessings or benefit to going after Christ. This is what people who don't believe in God say. They say that it's a tale that God gives blessing. It's a legendary Christian bag. It's a myth. But see, the, the myth is thinking that, that following Christ will gain you worldly riches. That's the real myth. That's the myth, that it will gain you worldly riches, but I guarantee you it will give you some spiritual blessings that you can't buy. Some people say, well, I, I believe, I believe, but I still go through depression. I, I, I still face anxiety. I, I still feel fear. I still feel hopelessness, purposelessness. I still feel unloved. I, I, I thought if I went after Christ that he would correct all that stuff. I, 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 don't, I don't see the benefit. I don't see the blessings of going after God. I, I don't see it. I don't see it in other Christians. I don't see it in the church. I don't see it in believers. They live the same as everybody else. They do the same thing as everybody else. They, uh, they fill a void just like we do. They out there doing ph street pharmaceuticals. They out there on prescription drugs. They out there uh, drinking and, and, and binge watching TV. They face the problems and difficulties of life just like we do, and they respond just like we do what's the benefit where are the blessings in following and following Christ I hear preachers say that uh that uh that God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory and I don't feel like my needs is being supplied see people don't think it's a benefit to following Jesus Today I want to discuss how to get to 
the spiritual bag. I want to say that one more time. How to get to the spiritual, the spiritual bag. So you can begin to experience all the blessings and benefits that God is talking about in his, in his word. How to get to the spiritual bag. The first thing that you have to understand is that Christ is the spiritual bag. Y'all better listen to me. Christ is the very spiritual bag. If you're saying, I, I, I'm not experiencing blessing, I'm not experiencing the benefits, that's because you haven't experienced Christ. L listen, to what, listen to what I'm saying. In, 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 the, scripture, in the scriptures, it, it says in the scriptures that we read, we, we read uh, that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. The Bible says in Christ. According to his riches in glory in Christ. We got to look at the phrases that, that, that this word says, that this word says. It says in Christ. In Christ. Not only that, Ephesians 1 and 3 says he will give us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. In Christ. So you telling me that Jesus is this spiritual bag. Jesus is this spiritual bag. So I, I, I'm going to experience those blessings. But the only way I'm going to experience those blessings is if I experience Christ. Watch this. It let me know that when I'm in the presence of God, I experience the spiritual blessings. When I commune with God, when I fellowship with God, that's when I get the peace that passes all understanding. That's when I get the joy that the world can't take away. That's when I get peace and comfort. That's when I get healing is when I fellowship in his glory. When I experience the glory of God, I get all the benefits of fellowshipping with him. Did you know that people were healed and delivered just because they touched God? Just because they went around God. The spiritual blessings come when you fellowship with Christ. If you're not fellowshipping with Christ, you will not experience those spiritual blessings. And I got I to gotta explain this. Y'all got to let, let me walk through this. Watch this. In the Garden of Eden, in the Garden of Eden, Man and woman, they were, they were experiencing all the blessings and benefits of God. And then they sinned, and it broke their relationship with God. So they were no longer able to commune with God in the same way. So guess what happened? They got kicked out of the garden, and guess what? They had to till the ground, and the Bible said that it didn't produce like it was before. Because, see, now they're out of, out of fellowship with God. Where God is, hey, it bears fruit. Where God is, there's riches. Where God is, there's unconditional love. So when they were separated from God, they didn't get to experience all the things that God had planned for them. But watch this. you got to understand what Christ did. And they were pointing to it in the Old Testament. The Bible says that when Adam and Eve sinned, that they sowed on fig leaves and covered themselves. But God said that wasn't good enough, so he sacrificed a lamb right then and put the skin and covered them for him. Right there, that was pointing to what Christ would do for us to bring us back in relationship with God so that we could experience the benefits and blessings of God. Watch this. In the Old Testament, the sacrificing of lambs was pointing to Christ. It was saying that it was unblemished. A lamb had to be unblemished. And it was innocent. What did the lamb do? It had done nothing. That was pointing to Christ that Christ was innocent. He had done nothing. He was sinless. And when he died for us, he brought us back in relationship with God so that we can experience the benefits and blessings of God. Every person who believes in Jesus Christ now possesses the opportunity to go before the Lord and commune with God for themselves. The Bible says that the veil in the temple was broken, that before only the priest could go back and commune in the presence of God. But now each one of us can now go back and commune with God for ourselves. And this is so important because now that we can commune with ourselves, we can experience the blessings and benefits of God. The reason why we don't experience the blessings and benefits of God is because we don't fellowship in relationship with him. Listen, 
Watch this. You got to understand it's the difference between relationship and fellowship. You got to understand this difference. It's a difference between relationship and fellowship. Relationship is this. Relationship is, let me explain it this way. I have three daughters. They're all my daughters. That's how we have a relationship. I'm the, their father, and they are my, they're my children. But watch this. I don't have the same fellowship with all three of them, and every parent knows that. London, if anybody's been around me, everybody know London follows me everywhere. Everywhere I go. I got a different fellowship with her. That's just because she followed me everywhere. Everywhere I go, she goes. So when I eating some gum, guess what she get to do? Eat some gum. <laughs> when I get some candy, guess what she get to do? Get some candy. She experiences benefits because all three of them I'm related to, but she experienced the benefits because she seeks me to fellowship. It's the same with the believer. We experience the benefits and blessings of God. Each believer has a relationship with God. You are a child of God, but you don't experience him in the same way. You experience God differently when you fellowship with him. If you're saying, well, I, man, I'm not, I'm not experiencing the peace y'all talking about. I'm not experiencing the joy the Bible is talking about. That means you need to go in fellowship more with him. I can break that down through scripture, but I'm not. It's, it's all through scripture. The, the, the whole purpose of our being is to fellowship with God. That's the whole purpose of our being is to fellowship with God. But I don't have time to work. <laughs> I don't have time to work all that through the old covenant and the new covenant, too. It's amazing. But, but, but watch this. I want to go. I want to go to the verses in Second Chronicles. The verse in Second Chronicles says, "If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I'll, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal the land." Watch this. I want to show you how to to fellowship with Him closer, so that you experience the benefits of His presence more. It's 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 it's, it's benefits and blessings to God just being in His glory, y'all. Just being in His glory is benefits and blessings that you get just being around Him. The first thing you have to do in, to, in order to experience a deeper fellowship is acknowledge sin. Did everybody hear that? Stay with me, y'all. Don't go to sleep. I promise I'm going to make this a little bit more entertaining for y'all. <laughs> Don't go to sleep. Trust me. Don't go to sleep. The first thing you have to do in to order to experience a deeper fellowship with him is you have to acknowledge sin. You have to say, listen, in any relationship for it to be reconciled, somebody have to say, I'm wrong. <laughs> you have to admit to being wrong, and I guarantee you, the Lord ain't about to tell you he wrong. <laughs> do, do you understand? So watch, you have to acknowledge sin. The Bible says it, it steps to even acknowledge sin. The first step to acknowledge sin is that you have to humble yourself. Did, did everybody hear me? You have to humble yourself. And I know people be like, well, what is that? I'm about to show you what that looks like. I'm about to tell you what that looks like, what humbling yourself looks like. It's, 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 the, the reason that keeps people from God is, is it's a refusal to humble yourself. The, I want to go through three things of why people refuse to humble themselves. The first reason people refuse to humble themselves is because it's no shame to their game. Did y'all hear me? It's, it's no shame to that game. And I'm going to use some words from a philosopher to explain this. A philosopher did a song called Over. And he said, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm doing me. I'm doing me. I'm living life right now. And this is what I'm going to do till it's over, till it's all over, but it's far from over. Let me interpret that for everybody that don't do rap. <laughs> First, he said, the first two lines, what am I doing? What am I doing? First, he said, at first, I was questioning myself about my actions. But then I realized, who is over me? I'm going to do me. I'm doing me. I'm going to do me, and I'm going to do that till it's over. But it's far from over. Basically, he's saying, who's going to stop me from doing me? That's the attitude of an unbeliever. 
That's the attitude of somebody that's not saved. That's the attitude of somebody. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit convicts the whole world, believer or unbeliever, the whole world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And that's an unbeliever saying, I'm doing me. That's a refusal to humble yourself. The second reason why we don't humble ourselves and ask for forgiveness is because we misjudge God's character. I want to say that one more time. We misjudge God's character. And I, 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 I want to give you examples of this. Some people misjudge God's character because they don't know him like that. And so it, you can be a believer and misjudge God's character. Uh, 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 for example, some people think God is a hard God. Uh, that God, that, like, why would the Lord allow so much stuff to happen like this? God is a hard God. They misjudge his character. And because they misjudge his character, they refuse to humble themselves before him. If, if, if people think God is a hard God, but he, he's not. It's a whole chapter in Psalm devoted to his mercy endureth forever. <laughs> Listen, Jonah said, Jonah said, Lord, you so forgiving and you so merciful that I don't even want to go preach the word to these people because I know if they repent that you're going to forgive them and I don't want them to be forgiven. That's how merciful God is. God is merciful. Some, listen, some people, some people don't humble themselves before God because they misjudge God's character. Let me show you another way they misjudge God's character. It, another way they think they, they misjudge God's character is they think that they can actually be right and he can be wrong in the relationship. Human beings think that. I want to say that one more time. You actually think you could be right and he could be wrong. No, no, listen, listen. And listen, that's to, that's to have a false idea of his character, his truth, his justice, his omniscience, his omnipotence. L let me explain. My daughter, London, came up to me and said, Daddy, how do you spell play? I said, P-L-A-Y. She was like, no, no, silly daddy. That's not how you spell play. You spell play Q-T-L-S. I looked at her like, what in the world? <laughs> what in the world are you talking about, QT? And listen, she was trying to tell me how to spell play, and she don't even know her full alphabet. She don't know how to, she don't know how to pronounce her letters. Listen, she don't know how to pronounce her letters. She don't know how to spell the small, little, simple words. She don't know the difference between a verb, a subject, a pronoun, a, 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 a conjugate. She don't know what a prepositional phrase is. She don't know any of those things, but she's trying to tell me how to spell play. <laughs> That's the same thing when we try to tell God something. Do you, you, your mind can't even possess what he knows. <laughs> but we will try, we will try to judge situations based on the best that we think instead of humbling ourselves and going to God and say, Lord, what do you think about this matter? What do you think about what I'm doing? The third reason why we don't humble ourselves and, and go before the Lord is because sin has become status quo in our life. I'll say that one more time. Because sin has become status quo in our life. And I got, I, I, I tell you, that, that means it's become normalized. Sin has become normalized. That, that the Holy Spirit used to tell you, hey, man, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? And you was like, man, get off me. Man, get off me. And you did you for so long that it has become normalized. It has become status quo. Quo, watch this. Clifton used to work at the cell barn in the summertime. And in the summertime, I would go work with him at the cell barn in Bristow. And I would go out there. It would be super hot. It's about 135 degrees. And it's all these animals out there at the cell barn about to get sell thousands of animals and cows and all kind of stuff and horses and sheep and goats and pigs and all kind of stuff and a whole bunch of manure. <laughs> and so it's super hot with a whole bunch of manure, and you'll be like, as soon as you get there, it smack you in the face. Like, oh my gosh, this is so disgusting. How did that get in my mouth? <laughs> it's so disgusting. It takes you back. It arrests you. You'll be like, oh my goodness. But guess what? After an hour or two there, you can't even smell it no more. Did you know that's the way, the same way sin is in our life? 
that if you get that comfortable with it, if you stay in it for so long, the stench of sin doesn't even do anything to you anymore. And so you don't humble yourself and go before the Lord because it's normal to you. When it's not normal to God, sin is not normal to God. It messes up your fellowship. Yeah, you can be a child of God, but you're not experiencing the blessings, the benefits of God because of everything you're doing in your life. Sin cannot be normalized to you. It can't be status quo to you. You don't, you don't think God is anything. You don't think uh, that it's blessings and benefits to follow in Christ. That's because you're not close enough to him. You can't experience it. When you're in the presence of God and his glory, listen, let me tell you something. It changes you. It changes you. If no changing power, if no transformation power has taken root in your life, it's something wrong. And I'm telling you, the issue is sin. You have to humble yourself. You have to humble. The Bible says if you humble yourself, if you, if you humble yourself, if you pray, that's communicate with God. Because guess what? Sometimes we've been in it so long we can't see it. But communicating with God, guess what it does? He searches you. He points it out to you. That's what prayer does. But if you ain't got no prayer life, he, he, can't, he can't tell you. You ain't giving him a chance to talk to you. He's trying to talk to you and you're doing your own thing and walking further away from him. And you're walking further and further away from him. He said, watch this. He said, watch this. He said, what do you do? If, they, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Watch this. We always before the face of the Lord, but he's talking about intimacy. If you really, every, with everything you are, if you seek my face and then do what? Turn from your wicked ways. Anything that's not leading you closer to God is wicked. See, we see wicked as murder, adultery, all those things. Any, it's wicked if it's not bringing you closer to God. If you're walking, in, if Christ is the center and you're walking any direction but towards him, it's wicked. Does, does everybody understand that? That's, that's the definition of wicked. You can say, well, I'm not doing anything super bad or anything like that, but you're not going towards him. You're not doing what he created you to do, which is to worship, which is to fellowship with him. It's not a good message, I guess. Here we go. Watch this. If we refuse to turn from our wicked ways, we block the blessings of God. If we refuse to turn and seek him with everything that we are, we block the blessings of God. You know what we call that in basketball? Self-check. Let me explain self-check to y'all. Self-check is when we all on the court and somebody is so bad on the court. Somebody is so garbage that we don't even defend them. <laughs> that we, we like, let him shoot. He ain't going to make it even if he by himself. And when you refuse to turn to God, that's exactly what you do as a Christian. You put yourself in self-check. The enemy ain't even worried about you because you refuse to turn to God anyway. But watch what he says. Watch what he says. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and do what? And seek my face. That means repent. That means you were going in a direction that was not towards him. To turn towards him means to repent. If they will repent, guess what he said I'll do? I will hear from him. That means he wasn't even hearing you. He wasn't even listening to you. That means you thought you had a relationship, a fellowship, a close fellowship, but you didn't. That means he wasn't even hearing you. That means you could have been talking and talking and talking and God was doing it. He said, I will hear from heaven and I will do what? I will forgive your sin and do what? heal the land why is this so important if he heals the land what happens then you produce fruit did everybody hear that if he heals the land you produce fruit when you go after the spiritual bag which is christ and i'm all i'm talking about y'all is fellowship with him seek him pray to him seek him like nothing else like nothing you have ever sought after before Seek him like that, and you will experience the blessings and benefits of God. And he said, that's where the riches come. <laughs> that's where the riches, that's where you're going to experience me in a different way <laughs> that you never have before. <laughs> when you seek me like that, 
Watch this. I, I, I got a story, and I'm, and I'm closing. I was reading my kids a bedtime story the other day, and it was about a mouse and a giant. And <laughs> this story is so funny. So it, it was this giant that had took over the town. Giant took over the town. He put a big boulder, got a big boulder, blocked the middle of the road so nobody could leave in and out. They said his footprints were so big, and he messed up all the crops in the field and all that stuff. His footprints were so big that it left lakes in the field. But it was just how he wanted it, though. It left lakes in the field. And watch this. He could do whatever he wanted to do. He had full authority. He had full reign. Because he's big, and he got the strength, and he's big. They said, the mouse said to the people, that's all right. I'll get him. They were like, how you going to get him, mouse? He was like, wait, you'll see. He was like, give me a straw, give me some cheese, and a rock, a little pebble. I'll show you how to do it. They was like, what are you talking about, little mouse? He was like, I'm going to show you how to do it. So he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes to the giant, and the mouse tells the giant, hey, I'll come here to challenge you. And the giant was like, what, you came here to challenge me? And the mouse was like, yeah, I came here to challenge you. He's like, the first thing I want to challenge you to is I want to challenge you to throw me pebbles. He was like, what? He was like, yeah, I can throw a pebble way farther than you. So he picks up a little tiny pebble, and he chunks it. And then the giant grabs a rock, and he chunks. He's like, man, mine went farther. He said, yeah, you did it to that, but can you do it to that boulder right there that you put in the middle of the road? He was like, yeah, I can do it to that boulder I put in the middle of the road. So he goes, and he grabs the boulder, he, and he chunks the boulder out of the middle of the road. And he was like, okay, okay, you're pretty strong, you're pretty strong. He said, you see, he said, all right, second challenge. He said, you see this puddle of water right here? I bet you I can drink this whole puddle of water. So he goes, and the mouse drinks the, all the puddle of water. And he said, see, you can't do that. And the giant said, I can do that. He said, well, go drink those lakes that you made over there with your footprints. He was like, all right, I'll drink it. So he goes over there, and he drinks all the water from the lakes and gets all of it up. And the mouse said, all right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. This is the last challenge, though. And what he had done was he had took some cheese and that looked like a rock and dipped it in water. And he told the giant, he said, look, you see this rock right here? I'm going to squeeze it so hard to make water come out of it. And he was like, you can't do that. So he squeezed it, and water began to come out of the, the cheese, which the giant thought was a rock. And he said, I bet you can't do it. So the giant went to grab a rock, and he's squeezing this rock as hard as he can, as hard as he can, and no water comes out. <laughs> no water comes out. So the giant takes off, and the giant leaves and said, man, that mouse is strong, too strong for me. And he leaves. And the mouse had victory over the giant. And we can all tell from the story why he had victory over the giant. And that was because of the giant's pride. The giant had all the strength. He possessed all the strength. He possessed all the will. But his pride kept him from ruling like he should. Let me tell you something. Christ has given us everything we need to possess to be strong in him, to overcome any situation in the world. He's given us every spiritual blessing in him, but guess what keeps us from ruling? Pride. We refuse to humble ourselves before the Lord, and the smallest things defeat us. The smallest tricks and deception and lies from Satan defeat us and bring us down in life because of pride we refuse to humble ourselves before God and say, Lord, I'm going to seek you. I'm going to trust you no matter what. Listen, don't think you can run your life better than God. You can't. If you want to experience all the blessings that come with Christ, you have to seek it after him. You have to fellowship with him. You have to get in your closet in your quiet time. And pray and let the glory of the Lord overshadow you. God has given us everything we need already to have victory. You've been crying. You've been praying for stuff saying, Lord, why, Lord, why? He said, just fellowship with me. Everything you need to have victory, God has given. The way to get to the spiritual bag is in Christ. In communion with him. Take it more seriously than you have been. As the deacons come, 
If you are here today and you have never experienced what it means to have a relationship with God, I pray that you would come to him right now. There's benefits, there's blessings to following Christ. There is. But you have to let go of sin. You have to let go and let God. I'm not saying that you will never mess up again. That's not what I'm saying. But you got to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need your help. Lord, I'm coming after you with everything I got. Lord, I've tried it on my own, and it doesn't work. I want to experience the benefits and blessings of having a close fellowship with you, a close relationship with you. Won't you come? Won't you come?